day and um, you know, a little earlier this morning, the roads were around here, that, that hill was not exactly the, the safest. Um, so we're glad that we've had snow plows come through uh, while we were in the first service and hopefully the roads are a lot better and, and everyone will, will stay safe as they're driving. If they're driving now, we will pray for safety. And then as you leave today, please uh, take care of yourselves, drive slow, be, uh, be safe uh, on your way home. But we're glad that you were here and worshiping as, as we join together today. We're going to be continuing uh, our sermon series on being challenged. And we're going to look at it in a different way today. We're going to look at, at, at being challenged by seeking solitude and how different that is than what we normally think about it to be. We think of solitude being by ourselves, but God is actually showing us, Jesus shows us what, by his habit that solitude is actually not that way. And so we'll be digging into that when we get into the message. Just a few announcements that we have um, here today. Um, we are uh, looking to continue to start this children's choir. And, and so if you have kids that, um, or know people that have kids that are ages 4 to 10, um, there's, there's information on the usher stand. Please take that, give it to them, have them call the church office, or you bring it in and let us know. Um, Pete's been working really hard. We've been talking about how we can uh, we do it safely. But it's an opportunity for them to come and, and sing and make music to God, give glory to God. And, and that's what we want. We want to give glory to our Lord and Savior, and we're very thankful for that opportunity and, and, and for the kids to be singing. So please um, look at it, pray about it. If you know people, give, give it, the information to them. Then also, coming up very quickly, is Lent. Uh, believe it or not, on the, on the 17th of, of February, that Wednesday, it is Ash Wednesday. It's the start of Lent. And on that day, we will be um, did, doing the ashes and, and, and putting ashes on your forehead in the sign of the cross. Uh, and, and, but when we do this, we are actually, we're going to be doing the ashes. We're not going to stop from doing it. We're going to be coming up with a different way. And in fact, it will be on just slightly different. Um, in, in order to, to, to keep it as safe as possible, um, so that, that there is no question on safety and concern um, and, and touching, you know, because no, normally it's, it's one finger dipping into ash and then on a forehead and then the same thing. We're going to make sure that that doesn't happen. And then, so we have a, a different way of doing it, but there will be ashes on Ash Wednesday. So the service will be at uh, 7 p.m. that day. But then also, there will be Holy Communion uh, on that day too. And so we come together uh, and, and worship our Lord and prepare our hearts and, and minds in, as, as we get, prepare for that Lenten journey. Um, our Lenten series will be on Job and, and um, talking about how Job was, was working through, but also it ends with Job's famous line that a lot of people don't credit Job to saying, but he did, of, I know that my Redeemer lives. And so we'll end on Easter, the, the series of Job, on Easter. And so we're going to be getting together here and preparing our hearts and minds in this being challenge. And so as we do, we're going to sing this first song. And, and I just want you to stay seated and, and, and use this song. You can sing along if you want. If you just want to make this a prayer, um, do that. But, it, but it's a focus on, on the solitude. It's a focus on who our Lord is and what he says to us. That we are not alone. That he is always with us. So you can sing along if you like. Or you can just meditate on these words. <laughs> Once again, just you, I am. 
We are the branches rooted in the vine of Christ. We come because we seek to abide in Christ. The branches that remain in the vine bear much fruit. We come because we long to be spiritually vibrant, alive, and productive. If we abide in Christ, then Christ's word will abide in us. We come because we strive to be faithful disciples. We gather for worship now to, to the glory of the one God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May we grow body as God tends us lovingly. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, in whose spirit there is no deceit. As Moses speaks to the people through God, we confess in those times we do not listen to your words and close our hearts to you. Forgive us, Lord. As Paul warns, we confess those times when our freedom in Christ causes one who is weak in faith to stumble. Forgive us, Lord. As Jesus, the long-awaited prophet and Savior, taught with and showed his authority and power, we confess those times when we allow the forces of evil to make us forget the deliverance and love of God we have in Christ. Forgive us, Lord. With David the psalmist, we humbly come before the Lord. Amen. I acknowledge my sin to you. And I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach you. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us. And for His sake, forgives us all our sins. As a servant of Christ, by His authority, I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To those who believe in His name, He gives the power to become the children of God, and has promised them His Holy Spirit.
waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams to be glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth knocks. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will exalt among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the book of James, James chapter 4. And here we hear the warnings about worldliness and a reminder that we have a God who loves to be with us. What causes quarrels? And what causes lights among you? Is it not this that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Oh, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scriptures say he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter return to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to continue with the song, All the People Say Amen. And this is just a reminder of what we just read, that what we just read and how we exalt God, and we can give him praise, because if we ask, and ask him in the right frame, in the right heart, he listens and he answers.
Jesus telling us? Telling us that he is the vine and that we are the branches and we should abide in him. So the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the vine and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the world that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. journey. This journey about being challenged. And the journey continues. It's been one of those journeys that we are going to practice five keystone habits of Jesus Christ so that ultimately we can be more like him. We've had this verse that has popped up many times and it's been right here. We've read it together and so I encourage you to read it with me from Matthew 11, 29. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Oh yes, we've walked with him, we've worked with him, we're learning how he has done it, we're watching how he is doing it, we're receiving the blessings of grace. And so today we're going to continue by looking at Keystone Habit number four, and that is to seek solitude. This is one that I think is a little foreign to us. It's hard to do. We, we talked about community, and next week we will talk about the importance of church, which has that community aspect in it. But, but Jesus, he found this beauty by, by balancing the, the, the time when he was with people, when he was within his community, and, and the people he surrounded himself with, and the times when he was alone, just him and God. Question for you. How distracting is the world that we live in? Think about that. How distracting is the world that we live in? And I want you here to be truly, truly honest. Because how many of you are ready, are ready today in this worship service, even though I'm trying to be the most engaging person that you're going to have up here, how many of you have, have thought about checking your phones? Maybe you're kind of receiving a text message that, or, or no one is coming. Or, or maybe there's an email that you want to receive that you're looking for. And it, it, maybe it's not your phones. Maybe you're making this, this mental grocery list that you need to go pick up food for, for later for the rest of this week. Maybe, just maybe, some of you are thinking, hmm, hmm, what am I going to eat after this today? Or maybe you were like me this morning when I came in and no one was here. It was, it was dark. And I sat down in that front seat and, and I wasn't in God's presence physically or, or, or mentally. I was here physically, but just not mentally. Because I was wondering, what am I going to want 
lunch today because there's no NFL Pro Bowl. What's the strike to me? Think of all those noises that are in this world. All those noises that, that, that are, are taking you away from being in God's presence or, or pulling you away from solitude. And, and part of solitude is that you have to get away from those noises. I, I was been enamored by the Gospel of Mark. In, in, in the first chapter, Mark chapter 1, this is all what happens. Jesus begins his ministry. And, and right away in verses 14 and 15, we see Jesus already preaching the good news. You, you jump ahead a few verses in 16 through 20. Jesus is calling his disciples and they're dropping everything. And then they're following him. And later on he goes into the synagogue. And he's preaching. And people are amazed at the way he teaches. And he continues in Mark and in chapter 1. Oh, still in chapter 1, this is guy. A guy. He starts yelling at Jesus. Yelling at him, and he wasn't yelling, preach it, Jesus, preach it, you got it. He was yelling at him because he was demon possessed. Then Jesus goes off into Peter's house and he heals Peter's mom. It doesn't stop there. Because it says then that evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or, or possessed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and they would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Look at all these things. Did you hear all those things that Jesus did in a day? He was busy, and I'm sure he was tired. I know I would have been tired. Exhausted. But you know what happens next? We're rising very early in the morning. While it was still dark, he departed and went to a desolate place. And there he prayed. He got a long time with God. He needed to be in touch. He prayed and he talked to God, and you can do both at the same time. If you see, throughout the Gospels, we can see Jesus seeking solitude. 39 different times, Jesus sought solitude. He sought solitude before making decisions that, that began some hard work. He, he sought solitude while he was doing his work, and, and he sought solitude to recharge, to recharge after the day was complete, after a very hard day. He went 40 days in the wilderness so that he could be alone with God and could be before he began his three years of, of ministry that would ultimately lead him to the cross. He spent time in solitude grieving his friend John the Baptist after he was martyred. He spent a long time with God as he was going through and as he was enduring the cross. See, this is a keystone habit that we can learn from. It's a habit that we struggle with. We see Jesus doing it. Marion Webster's definition of solitude is this. The quality or state of being alone or remote from society, seclusion. And this definition, the secular definition, is actually very dangerous because we were not made to be alone. We weren't supposed to be alone. Think about that. One of the worst punishments that, that you can get, a prisoner can get while, while in prison is solitary confinement. See, solitude is not about being alone, and that's what we always think about it. When we think about solitude in our faith, solitude is, is, is being alone with God. Being alone with Him. I don't know how many of you have heard of Orfield Laboratory. Well, Orfield Laboratory has this room. Oh yeah, it's a room which is well known to be the quietest room in the world. And, and, and people would, would go in there, and, and it's so quiet that you can actually hear your heartbeat and your blood flowing through you. And then they take tours, tours through this room, and you can walk in it, and they say that people go crazy after a few minutes because, because it is so quiet. So think about how hard it is to be quiet. 
be silent. How hard is it to sit in silence and in solitude? Now, I know it, it, it's hard because that was the punishment for my kids when they were little. Time out corner or time out stair. We had a time out stair where they had to sit and be quiet, not do anything, all by themselves. And I think of how many times they were squirming. We had to remind them that you're in time out. How hard is it to sit in silence and solitude? Because we weren't meant to be alone. Because there's this great relationship, this relationship that we have between us and God. Solitude in the life of Jesus wasn't so that he could be alone. It was so that he could be alone with God. Solitude is about being alone with God, to pray, to talk to God. It, it, it's a place where we can shut out the noises of this world so that we can talk to God. And more importantly, so that we can hear God speak. To us. James 4 8 says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. We have this God who wants to have a relationship with us, and who wants us to spend time with Him, and who's approachable. Solitude is not being about uh, all alone with yourself, it is about being alone with God, to spend time with, with God. And it's important that we all spend time alone. I know this, I need time away from everyone and at every place. I, 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 sometimes you just have to find that time. But are you spending that time with the world? Or are you spending that time? I really want to get to the place where David was when he wrote this in the psalm. For a day in your courts is, a better, is better than thousands elsewhere. See, every day is a battle. Every day is a battle, and, and there are things battling for our minds. There are people, there's work, there's organizations, there's school, there's clubs, there's sports. They all battle for our minds every single day. They want space in our minds every single day. Think of all those commercial jingles. I could probably say something, you could tell me the product. I could probably hum a, a tune from a jingle and you could tell me the product. You probably hear the, the jingle on, on the TV or on radio and guess what? You're singing along because they're battling your minds, you are constantly being bombarded. And so what are you allowing in? What are you allowing in? Talked about phones. How many times do you check your phones a day? Millennials. Millennials on average is 150 times a day. Say that if you're younger, under 15, you check your phone every eight minutes, even if you're in school. Think of that. All the rings and dings and pings and bings and notification after notification. Somebody needs you. We live in this loud and distracting world, and distractions are becoming more and more and more unless we do something about them. We know that some distractions are good and, and some are bad. But what are those distractions in your life? What, where, what, what are the, the distractions keeping you from? You, you, you see, this solitude is, is not about clearing our minds. Solitude is about filling our minds. Think about that. All the distractions in the world. That many people have gone to this thing called meditation. Christians go to a thing called meditation. And it's not wrong. It's actually very biblical. The only problem is, is that we twisted and we turned it around. So we say we need meditation to clear our minds. But that's not God, how God made you. God doesn't want you to clear your minds. God made us creative and mindful. God wants us to fill our minds with Him. To fill our minds with the right thing. 
He says in the scripture, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. When we don't spend time in solitude with God, the world fills our minds with these things. And they fill us to the point where we are exhausted. And then we have to say, we have to go, I have to go, and we completely clear my mind. And the world is going around and filling us with things that exhaust us, but God fills us. God fills us with endurance. God fills us with love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. The things that we need. It's about filling our minds with Him. Turning off the noises of this world. But not to the point where we don't hear God speak. problem is, is it that God isn't speaking? It is that we are listening. The noises of the world is drowning out God's voice, and, and the problem is, is that we can't listen or we listen. We are listening to Him. We're listening to everything else instead. That's why He said we sing. Still to know that I am God. The battle of this world, we can just stop and be still. We still to know that I am God. We still to know that I am speaking still today. Speaking still to you. When all this stuff happens, we become more productive. More productive in sharing Him and sharing His Word and sharing who He is with our words, with our actions, with our thoughts. Because time with God, it fills our minds. And it doesn't just fill our minds with stuff. It makes us focus. Solitude brings focus. Solitude will bring focus to us. Because solitude will make us more productive, not less. Solitude is going to bring focus in a loud and distracting world. It makes us more productive and, 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 and it helps us because when we think of being distracted, we think of being drawn apart or drawn away. But coming to God, coming to Him draws us together. We read about this in the Gospel of John. Abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, whoever abides in me and I in him. He it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Abide, abide, abide. Or in other translations, remain, 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 abide in God. So that it's not more about you. So it's not more about the world. Because you can't outdo God by, by trying to be God. You cannot outdo God. But we can be with Him. And let Him do His work through us. Because it is His work. Because God can do more in one second than we can do in a lifetime. Think of what God can do through you in one second. We spend time alone with Him to hear Him. So that you can give all the things of the, in the world over to Him. So that you can be in His presence. It fills our minds. So that we can draw near to Him. We can find going to make you uncomfortable. I want you to spend a few minutes, a few moments here 
in solitude with God. In his presence, just you and him. I don't know where you are in your life right now. I don't know those things that are, are completely uh, in, in invading your life right now, those noises of, of the world that are in your life right now. But you can come to him in solitude, alone with him, and give it to him. If you're hurting, tell him that he will carry it. If you have something to rejoice about, tell him and he will rejoice with you. If you have something to ask, ask him. Ask him in his name. And he will listen. And he will answer according to his word. But more importantly, Personally, Father, we come to you. We come to you in your presence. Lord, it's hard. It's hard to be alone. It's hard to be quiet. It's hard to truly listen to you. But Jesus showed us the example of how to be in solitude, not to be by ourselves, but to be alone with you. So we can hear your voice. So we know what we want the most. So that we can be filled with your presence, we can be filled with your grace. Lord, it's these times that we talk to us, and we talk with you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for solitude. For being with you, for being filled, for being focused, so that what we say, what we do, be all about you. All about your kingdom, all about your glory. Give us that peace, give us that time. Just to stop. We hear you. We ask this Lord in your most precious and holy name. Amen. <clears throat> we invite you to stand and join together. Confessing our Christian faith as we use the words of the Apostle. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered by Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell.
Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of scriptures. That you gave us both law and the gospel so that we can see our sin and yet see your love. Your love in, in your Savior. As Christ is the true prophet and Savior of this world, yet you gave us faith. So help us, Lord, to continue to hear, hear your voice and to find comfort in, in the work of salvation that was won for us by Jesus. Lord, we pray for those that proclaim the word. We ask that you continue to raise up faithful servants who will share your, your commands and the forgiveness that comes through Christ. Ever giving God, we, we ask that you continue to grant faith to every person by your Holy Spirit so that they can all hear your word and grow and, and be fed and nourished. Lord, produce in us good fruits for the sake of ourselves and others, that we do not cause anybody else to stumble. But Lord, help us to help them walk firmly in your ways. O oh, powerful Lord, there are things that are, that are unclean and the evil spirits that, that, that submit to you and obey you. Lord, you hinder the work of Satan in our lives, and your kingdom in is, is victorious. Lord, give us your peace and your presence. Give your peace and comfort to those who suffer afflictions in, in any way. Lord, today we lift up David and Bill and Fred and Linda and Terry and Rick and Vicki, Deputy McDonald and Don and David, all who are continuing treatments for cancer. Lord, we thank you for the doctors, the nurses, for the medications that are being developed, for the, for the way that, that they're being treated. We thank you for those that care for them. Heavenly Father, we lay before you Bill, Kathy Bell's father, who is hospitalized with pneumonia and is struggling to speak. Lord, we ask that you give him strength. We, we ask that you, you heal him because you are the great physician. And Lord, we give you thanks for Sandy's as she is recovering at home. Lord, we also lay before you, Amy. Continue to give her strength. So working to figure out all of the reasons why she is struggling in health. All these things, Lord, we bring them before you. Knowing that you are a great God. Knowing that your will will be done. And we lay it before you, Lord, as we pray that prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. It was on the night when he our Lord Jesus Christ with bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And what a joy it is to know that the peace of our Lord will be with us always. Amen.
to grow and to serve you and others in your name through all circumstances. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So I'm asking you to do something different today. As we come be before him and, and receive this, this blessing out, I, I want you to take your hands and I want you to receive the blessing. We receive his body and blood uh, as it's given to us. And so now I, as we go, I want you to receive his blessing this way. I want you to just not just stand there and, 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 and think it. I want you to, to physically think I'm receiving him because he is going with you. So I encourage you to take your hands and hold it out. Receive the words of God and God knowing that God is now with you. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We're going to close with the song um, it's, it's a little bit different. Hey, if you were involved or have sung like a um, VBS or your school, school groups or thing, this is the song of every move I make. And it's really about everything that we do, that every move, everything that we do is about Him. Everything that we say is about Him. And we celebrate that. We, we sing with joy about every move we make. We make it because of Jesus. Now, I know those words up there, those are hard words. Those words are na, 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 na. And I want you to, to not just sing the song and just sing it. I want you to celebrate it and celebrate everything that he is.
Christians, go in peace and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great weekend.